moving more to a position where people might have the right to choose how they want to depart this life? I think the answer is yes and no. I think there's something in the uh, growing individualism of British culture that suggests whose life is it anyway. At the same time, I think the medical profession has got a very clear majority against this. I think people involved in the area of social care recognise the pressures that are put on vulnerable people if we were to change the law. And particularly active today has been Baroness Tanny Gray-Thompson on behalf of people with profound physical disabilities who do fear the subconscious psychological coercive pressures that might be on them if the law changed. And that is, of course, the argument that always comes up, doesn't it, Andrew? How do you, how do you answer that? Because the cases we mm. always hear about, today's ruling is a good example of that, isn't it? People who are pretty clear about what they want and there's not much argument about that, no matter what the judges may say. But a lot of other people are much more vulnerable, might be pushed into something which is very unwise. Any system that introduced assisted dying either for terminally ill or incurably suffering people would have to have very strong safeguards, as other systems in the world that have introduced that do have, to make sure that people's desire to end their lives, to have assistance to end their lives, was uncoerced, was a desire that was settled and permanent as far as it could be. You know, that is absolutely essential. Um, I don't think it's beyond the wit of our medical and legal and political establishments to devise such a system. And I think that with a situation where 80% of the public supports a change in the law, even a majority of people um, with disabilities support a change in the law, Parliament is going to have to move towards that, you know, if not now, then eventually. You're quoting opinion polls. Uh, you were, you were yeah. shaking your head when it came to opinion polls. Well, certainly, I have roughly the same proportion what capital punishment reintroduced, and Parliament, in its wisdom, says no to that. And I think that's a, a parallel and a good example of the importance placed on our legislation to decide these issues. The conscience of the nation, the uh, elected House is obviously more significant here than the peers, um, but it's got to go to Parliament and that's what a number of the uh, uh, Supreme Court judges have said in their judgment today. So, but, so, yeah, sorry, I mean, it's a completely yeah. false analogy. That, I mean, First of all, that's not true. Way more people support uh, choice and dignity for in assisted dying than support uh, capital punishment. And, and, and the two things are completely incomparable. People who support capital punishment are talking about punitive death for other people. People who support assisted people who support, assist, just, people who support assisted dying for the terminally ill mm -hmm. are talking about their right to choose, the right to choose of those they love. It's about choice, dignity and behaving in a moral way to other people. It's not a, it's, I mean, it's, those are completely uh, incomparable situations. And I'm not saying that, you know, we should only go by majority rule in all of this. Parliament has to discuss, as the judges discussed in their judgment today, what the best way to implement it is. I'm just suggesting that there is a pretty overwhelming consensus in this country that each, most individual citizens would like to be able to make the choice for themselves. The problem is that I've worked for 14 years with profoundly disabled people, elderly people, people with a range of uh, diseases, multimorbidity is the buzzword now, um, and they are very, very vulnerable to being a burden. We're having this discussion when just last week we heard there's going to be a £2 billion shortfall in the NHS, there are problems with the delivery of health care, problems with social services. Um, we've got a growing number of elderly people coming demographically. Um, the last thing we want to be looking at is, uh, is a solution for a vocal and determined minority that might put a vulnerable majority at great risk. Just, we have to close, but very brief. It's hard to devise such a system, but it's not impossible, and the cost of not devising such a system is human suffering, which will only increase in the future. We have to leave it there, Andrew Copson and Dr Andrew Ferguson. Very grateful to you both. Thank you very Thank much. You.